Hey everyone, Wes and Drew here. Uh, we have a special, I don't know if we want to call it a bonus episode. We have a special episode of uh, The Basement Dwellers for you here. Um, Drew actually had set up an interview with a an author that uh, we all kind of fell in love with um, last year at some point. Uh, Drew, why don't you explain uh, what happened? Well, uh, we started... We'll get into this in the podcast a little bit, but we started a book club we talked about probably about a year ago, and we decided to to start with uh, Orkonomics by J. J. Zachary Pike, and uh, we all fell in love with it, and one day we were kind of just shooting the shit, and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to message him and be like, hey man, you want to be on for an interview? So I did, and I got a chatbot response that was like, hey Andrew, uh, I don't talk to people because there's too many of you. (laughs) (laughs) This chatbot handles everything. And then probably about 15 minutes later, I got a, I got a message on Facebook that was like, yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Sure. And so after I fangirled for about a day, I got a hold of everybody and we got it set up and through trial and error of, I don't know, three weeks. (laughs) Yeah. We finally got a day where we could all get together. We all remembered to get together. Yeah. <laughs> and the following is what unfolded from there. <laughs> yeah, man, it was, it was a great conversation. Uh, Zach is uh, just like you said, just a normal dude like us. It was like talking to anybody else on our podcast. Um, though with Lester. Yeah, it went- <laughs> It went, it went so much more like smooth than I could ever have dreamed of. And yeah. there were far fewer dirty words than we've ever put out. In episode. <laughs> I think yeah. this may be our cleanest episode yet. Wow. Yeah. So without farther ado. Further? Farther, farther, farther. For, for fada, for, 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 anyway. What did you fat do, Merida? <laughs> with the potatoes. Here's our interview with Jay Zachary Pike. They are those who live in the shadows, who feed upon Doritos and Mountain Dew. They take comfort in their dark habitats as they watch reruns of sci fi shows long past. They are. Basement Dwellers. Show me what you got. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. Thrive. We will rule over all this land, and you will call it this land. Make it so. Join me. Together, we can rule the galaxy of far and sun. I want to believe. We better get back, because it'll be dark soon, and they must say come at night. Welcome to the Basement Dwellers Podcast. I'm Drew, and I'm joined by my fellow host, Wes. Hey. Ron. Hello. And our very special guest, Jay Zachary Pike. Hello. Author of the Dark Prophet Saga, uh, Orconomics and Son of a Lich, and the upcoming Dragonfired. Uh, a Song of Three Spirits, and the short stories, The Cabal of Thotash. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yes. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Going well. Attack and Live Free or Undead. So, Zach, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Perfect. Thanks for having me. Good no deal, problem. Man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. this is yeah. awesome. I Very awesome. prepared <laughs> myself all morning not to nerd out and geek out and be like, oh my god, he's here, he's here, he's here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're like our first, like, real, I guess, like, big guest, I would say. Yeah, I would say so. One of our, yeah. In the, uh, in the vein of our, our nerdy interests, at least. Like, we've had, uh, 
Well, we had Ben on who uh, climbs mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. guess that was probably the, the, the next biggest one. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I guess um, just to chime in before you start in with your questions. Uh, so our history with uh, with Zach here is um, we had started a audio book club. God, was that last year sometime, was it? Yeah, that was last year, yeah. Last year? Was it last year or was it two years ago? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it was anyway. la- I think it was last year, like early last year. Well, we were trying to figure out what book we were all going to start um, listening to. I guess it was all through Audible, but uh, Orconomics was one of them, and immediately that kind of drew our attention. But uh, we entertained some other ideas, but ultimately settled on Orconomics, and we all listened to it and absolutely loved it. So, <laughs> and. Um, as a side note like that i am not a uh, an actual i don't read very often um i have a hard time focusing past just a, a couple sentences on pages and whatnot but uh, listening to the audiobook like it's what kind of got me back into actually uh consuming books so so uh thanks for that zach <laughs> my public service for the year that's yeah. great <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh Okay. I feel like you should have a special message along the lines of reading is fun. The more you know, or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Insert shooting star sound effect. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So for I sure. guess, I mean, just to start off, why don't you like tell us a little bit about yourself, if you're comfortable. Sure. So I've been uh, writing since I was 16, which is longer than I'd care to admit at this point. Um <laughs> And I've, I've uh, always had a, a real big interest in fantasy. Uh, when I was very young, I got into Tolkien, and then I started to branch out from there. But somewhere in high school, I, I picked up a, a book by Terry Pratchett, and that was kind of uh, it. After that, I really, my, my favorite fantasy was funny fantasy. Um, and that dovetailed nicely with what the gaming industry was doing. You know, there was starting to be more, um, more fantasy games out there in general, and then some of them started to get a little more uh, amusing, which was which was good for me. So, uh, I've been a gamer and a fantasy author for a very long time. Um, but in 2008, I was I was still kind of working on my my main. It was intended to be one book at that time, and it was it was just absolutely massive, um, and I, it was just kind of languishing, and I, I I couldn't figure out how anyone was ever going to publish it. Uh, because it was, it was really long and I was an unheard author. And around that time, you know, the, the financial crisis started to happen. And I started to get really into uh, just learning about economics because it's actually really interesting and, and can be kind of fun. Uh, and obviously, 2008 was a really interesting time for uh, for economics with the financial mm-hmm. crisis happening. Um, and at a certain point, I was just like, this is it. This is the angle my book needs. So I went back and I started rewriting the whole thing. I decided to do it a little smarter and make it a trilogy rather than trying to cram the whole story into one giant, uh, giant book. Uh, I don't know how much smarter it was because now it looks like I'm on on path uh, path to write three giant books. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, man, you're good. You don't have like the George R. R. Martin. My one book here is like a thousand pages. Yeah. (laughs) No, no, it's true for the genre. It's it's really not that bad. Um, (laughs) But at a certain point, I was still just like, you know, I, I have no connections and I hate networking. It's just not who I am. Um, and I'd read about how to get published and everything was like, well, look at your connections. And if you don't have them, try to network. And I was like, uh, this isn't going to work for me. And uh, <laughs> you know, self-publishing was starting to uh, starting to get some traffic traction. So I, uh, I decided I would write a short story. It was the Cabal of Thotash. I published it to see how it went. It was easy and it was... Uh, fun and I, I actually got some people reading the book and sending me positive feedback. So after that, I, uh, I, I decided I was going to roll or economics out uh, on my own, and I did. And the rest is history. Nice. I actually read Cabal Thotash like last Wednesday at during break at lunch at work. Laughed hysterically. I love all of the cultist names and <laughs> like that was the funniest part of it. <laughs> yeah. No. So it was fun. It was a, it was a fun little uh, little idea to play with. Yeah, yeah. I I really like that you took the economics angle with with the book. I, that's really kind of what uh, what uh, drew me in, especially because I'm I'm a business major and uh, I I love economics, even though I'm not 
particularly majoring in it, but seeing all or recognizing all the references from the financial crisis and uh, especially of the way some of the characters are named. And <laughs> it was just the, the, the whole tone of the book was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, thanks. I, I think the, the fun is that there's kind of two audiences. My, my sweet spot is definitely people who, uh, you know, know a little bit about business and economics and also love fantasy. That's definitely kind of uh, the people who are going to get everything. But I have a lot of people who just play fantasy games and, you know, they're like, wow, I learned something about economics today. I think a lot of the little <laughs> kind of naming gags related to, you know, finance. Um, you know, probably probably go over their heads, but that's fine. And then there's also a, a few readers who are like, I really like economics, and hey, I guess orcs are cool, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, you kind of answered a couple of the questions I had. Like, one of them was, uh, what are some of your inspirations for writing? And you kind of said you were into Tolkien and fantasy gaming. Like, is that like D&D gaming or do you have a different preferred system? Well, I, I think D&D gaming is fantastic when it's done right. Um, and I have very rarely done it right. And I've done it wrong a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing with D&D gaming, though, is like, did you have fun? I think I, I think uh, I, I had fun probably a good forty to fifty percent of the time. Oh, well, um, then half of the time you did it right. Like I think if you look back at most of my family, uh, most of my fantasy gaming groups, and then you look at like all the memes on the internet about the worst people to fantasy game with. I'm I'm at least half the people on the list, and then you know, the rest of my party with the rest of them. You know, so it's just you know I'm a I'm an atrocious DM. I'm uh, you know. Um, I'm not that great a player, uh, but it it was it was a lot of fun. Um, so I mean, I, I think I uh, as long as we weren't having fights, the uh, the inner part of fighting. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so, so for D and D, I've I've done some of it in my past. I'd like to do some tabletop uh, gaming in the future. I do get periodic letters, you know, from people saying, "Hey, can you can you put together a, a, a game setting uh, or campaign setting?" You know, set on Earth, and I, I think that would be a blast. So maybe someday that'll happen. But Ooh, that would be yeah. fantastic. That would be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. We would yeah. play the shit out of that. <laughs> I would too. I, you would you would get money from me for that one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Taking taking especially out. if you ran it. Especially if you ran it fifth edition too. That'd be uh, that would definitely bring a lot of people in too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, if you if you if you I, oof, and the licensing gets weird. But anyway, mm. yeah. So we're so uh, I'm I'm looking at kind of maybe something like that some, somewhere down the road. So that'll probably get me back into it. Um, I also did a lot of World of Warcraft, uh, a lot yeah. of you know Baldur's Gate. You know, so uh, once you took other people out of role playing games, you know, all those old uh, all the old computer games, those those always went pretty well for me when I was the only person to interact with. So yeah, um, yeah. so a lot of video games, some tabletop games. Um, yeah, good background across the spectrum. Cool. <laughs> so you said you started writing at 16? Yes. So did you always want to be a writer, or was it something that was like, we would do this for fun, and then um, it, it ballooned into what you're doing now? So embarrassingly enough, I, uh, I started, uh, I started uh, writing because I was kind of a shy kid, and there was a girl I had a crush on, and somehow in the strange chemistry of my adolescent mind writing a fantasy novel was a good way to impress a girl <laughs> if you're a teenager i don't recommend it <laughs> yeah um, but uh, you know the girl moved on and then i was like but i still like writing and uh you know uh, i kept it up well we're glad you did man <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess kind of a hard question for most writers or authors to answer is, do you have a favorite uh, work that you've written? Well, I think, I think the Dark Prophet saga as a whole, you know, I've been working on that for, for so long and the characters are, are really so near and dear to me that, um, you know, it's hard for me to, to kind of see them separate. You know, I, I think people will ask me about particular plot points or particular characters and um, I'll often have to pause for a second to say where are where are they in the arc because I've written the full arc twice before, um, minus you know some of the, the more fun economic angles and stuff like that. Um, so I, I mean I, I think you know it's hard for me to uh, separate any part of that out, but those are those are definitely my favorite works. 
That's fair. That's fair. It's like I say, it's kind of a it's like a weird question because most most authors like when they write something, it's like, no man, I love it all. Like when I'm writing it, yeah, that's why I'm writing it. <laughs> yeah, the, the general author advice is like, don't fall in love with any particular plot, or don't don't uh, get too enamored with one set of books. And I've I've broken that rule pretty heavily. So well, that's okay, man. We we like that you break the rules. There we go. Yeah. We're rebels here. That's right. So. You kind of answered it then, but uh, do you have a favorite character that you've written? I think we're all either in the middle of or at the end of Son of a Lich, right? I, fin- uh, I finished I finished it. Son of the Lich. I'm halfway through. I had to restart because I quit jobs and then started a new one where I can't listen to music or anything while I work. So, um, I, I, I think uh, I have lots of different favorites for different ways. I think, uh, you know, I love writing Gorm, which is why I put him right at the center of all my books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Thane Kaitha plot line has always just been something that I, I really uh, think is interesting and really like. Um, probably the most surprising one for me is how much I liked writing Tatar or mine, the Lich. Ooh, the mm-hmm. Lich. Yeah, no, he uh, he's he's been a lot of fun, and I I really like all my scenes with him. Yeah, I do love I do love the uh, the leaflets. Yeah, yeah. I, I I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing during that part, and with the. Uh, I, the the head of marketing. <laughs> the head of marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah, sometimes those little side characters really, really they wind up surprising you. Like I, I threw that in there as a one line joke, and then I, I just you know he kept on popping in. He was he became one of my favorites uh, from the book. Yeah. Another uh, another good example is Dwayne Poldo, who. Uh, the gnome who was kind of a he was a kind of a side character to give you a window into uh what's going on at uh, a particular mega corporation in, in the in the first book but in the second book you know i brought him back and he, he wound up being, being a lot of people's favorite yeah i really enjoyed that part too and i'm trying to remember the name of the the little creatures that live in his house that kind of take Ooh. over his house the wood gnomes <laughs> there yes. we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> well since we're kind of talking about writing uh do you have a specific uh, writing process that you use to get like from idea to book other than just sit down at the computer and start striking keys, mashing the keyboard? Yeah, I, um, I am a, a big on outlining and um, then outlining. Uh, I, I basically spend a ton of time writing a very detailed, very well structured, very well researched outline, and then I ignore it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that bad, but you know, like I'll, you start writing, and, and when you when you plan out a novel uh, in that much uh, in that much detail, you'll you'll think this is how it will be, and by the time you get there, you're like the, the the texture of the book, the way the characters are talking and interacting, and the way things are are flowing, um, you know, and the, the new ideas that have popped up have kind of meant that you can't you can't just push on. So then. Um, you know, if if it's a small thing, I'll just kind of make a revision and maybe adjust the outline a little bit, maybe maybe ignore it, but just keep going. And then sometimes, you know, I have to either say this is something I'll have to fix in the next next draft, or if it's really a roadblock for me, I'll have to go back and fix it, you know, break right that in before I can move forward. So uh, I like structure, and I I need structure to keep moving because it's paralyzing for me to not know where the where the book is going. Um, but then I wind up doing a lot kind of by the seat of my pants anyway. All right. Nice. Coming off of that, I know Ron had a question that we wrote down that I told him he had to be careful how he phrased it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That question, Ron. It's that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we were joking about uh, the people that you see in, like, coffee houses, and we were wondering if you were that type of writer where you like to you just go sit at a coffee shop and with your computer... <laughs> Man, I used to be. I, I used to go to a there's a there's a coffee shop in a town that, uh, that I used to live in uh, called Crack Skulls Coffee and Books, and uh, I love that place. I actually designed their logo. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, no, it's a it was a, it's a super. It's still there, and it's a wonderful bookstore uh, and coffee shop. Um, but I found that it wasn't terribly productive. You know, I'd go there and I'd be like, I'm going to have two productive hours in a coffee shop, and what would really happen is I would eat two bagels and talk to you know all the folks who came in and have a fun time but not a terribly productive time <laughs> um, and it, you know it's, it's, it, it costs money so um 
I, I prefer to, you know, come down in my basement and kind of uh, lock myself away early in the morning before the children wake up and, uh, you know, see, see how much I can rip through uh, before the day really starts. Gotcha. No, that was not how I phrased the question when we were brainstorming either. <laughs> <laughs> I think just, just say how you had phrased it because I think it's fine. Well, we were going to ask if you were a coffeehouse douche. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, but it's not how I write. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we've talked to you a little bit, like feel a little more comfortable, and you you we call each other like, Yes, yeah, no. You seem like you're, you're more welcome. like you're one welcome. of us, so like we can call you. I mean, not terrible things, but little joke <laughs> things didn't seem yeah. too offensive at the no, time. Fair. Like, <laughs> not gonna come at you with the hard F's and long S's, but you know, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we hit level one swearing. It's cool. <laughs> level one yeah Dad, dab it. <laughs> so you kind of already answered this one too a little bit but um how does real life seep into your writing because it's it's very obvious that it does like you said with uh or economics from the economic crisis and everything but how, how did that kind of just start snowballing I, I guess into your fantasy work well, I mean, I, I think um, anytime you're trying to uh, make something funny, one one area that's always kind of ample for um, finding humor is, is, is just to um, take a look at some of the things we kind of accept and then hold them up in, in terms of how they would really be. And I think um, obviously... The, the the gaming world and all the all the different fantasy worlds that we regularly you know trapes off into um, via tabletop and uh, and computer games uh, is rife with just a lot of things that that folks take for granted you know suspension of disbelief it's all wonderful um, but when you when you and and honestly so is so is our daily life there's just all kinds of things that we just accept about how businesses operate or how um how the economy works where we're just like yeah this is how it is uh and when you dig in and learn some of the history behind it or the why behind it uh it can be pretty pretty interesting or, or sometimes pretty ridiculous um so you know when i when i found out that you know just just taking the example of the 2008 uh financial crisis that's what's happening with people's mortgages you just assume a bank loans you some money i don't know for or the good of humanity or whatever so people can buy houses. <laughs> right. Right? yeah they give mortgages well they give mortgages and then they sell them to people who, who rebuy them and dice them up and they know that some of them are going to go and they they sell the riskiest debt off to, to other people and then it turns out that nobody even knows what they own i mean it, it gets more and more ridiculous um so i think i think kind of digging into economics uh you know kind of uh, gives you a fun angle and then like taking economic uh economic principles and applying them to video games, uh, especially obviously gets ridiculous. Like I can remember playing Diablo two in college and just thinking how, you know, I would, I was basically running through a, an entire civilization. It was those pygmy levels, right. With a little, little people running around. I was just running through their, their entire, like, you know, towns, wiping them out, committing a little mini genocide and gold was just like literally showering everywhere. Right. Like just fountains of money spurting up from the ground whenever I killed someone. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, man, if this was how it would want it, you know, work, I, I would think, you know, there'd be a pretty thriving business around this. Um, and, and you heard so, it here first, folks. Uh, genocide is profitable. <laughs> <laughs> well, playing video games, but you, but you accept it, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're playing video games, and you're like, yeah, killed, you know, like everyone in this town. I made 400 gold. That was cool. Off I go to my next adventure, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> That makes total sense, but I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I, I think uh, I think um, you know, just taking those those systems, those everyday things that we look at and say, yeah, that makes sense, and and kind of uh, using economics or gaming mechanics or, or fantasy to to you know shine a light on them. It's pretty fun. Yeah, that was that was another favorite part to me was your. Uh, your delve into the I'm trying to remember the adventurers guild. I'm trying to, was that the name of it? It's been the a while Heroes since I, the heroes guild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like just having it run like a business. Um, it, it was just fantastic. Like I said, I, uh, that that's you, the two veins that you, uh, that you got into as far as economics and fantasy, that's is exactly where I am. So it spoke to me pretty directly. <laughs> You're in the sweet spot, the target yeah. audience, as it were. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, what uh, what came first with your with your story? Was it the fantasy aspect or the economics or um, maybe you already answered that one? But uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was the fantasy. I, I'd really written the book and it was it was kind of funny and it, you know like there were funny parts and funner characters. But um, what it was lacking was that that angle, that thing you could look at and you could say this is what this book is about. Um, and uh, the financial crafts gave me that. Mm-hmm. Good deal. I know one of the things I like about the books is how you take all of the the little like acronyms for gaming and give them different meanings. <laughs> I do. I do like, way like, too much of that. <laughs> like you have like non-combatant papers and yeah, like stuff like 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 the stuff like that. The little things like that are one of the things like as a gamer that I caught on. I was. I was laughing at the little things that people probably weren't going to laugh at, but to me it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, there's there's the obvious one, like non non combatant paper carriers or NPCs. Uh, the Dark Prophet Saga is DPS. Um, <laughs> you know, so I, I, they're the big ones. I, I actually I spend way too much time whenever I've got to name something. I'm like, what can I sneak in here? So. <laughs> All of the, uh, like, if, if you're reading or listening to Son of the Lich, uh, there's a scene where um, early in the, in the book, the adventurers encounter a bureaucrat who is just going to make them fill out some forms to report the impending undead doom that is marching down upon them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and all of the forms are actually references to, like, original D&D books. They're like, or D&D concepts. They're like, uh, there's like MM74, I think, is Monstrous Manual, published in 1974 and stuff like that. And, or or something, something along those lines. You know, I actually went through and did all that research. And afterwards, I sat back and I said, literally no one. Is ever going to I did not catch that, but no, no I have didn't. To go back no and like one. write down yeah. all of these form names and be like, "What was this one?" <laughs> We're gonna be looking for context everywhere now. Yeah, I had a, I had a between all the lines. <laughs> I used to have a vanity plate when I was, uh, you know, uh, a, a long time ago. I used to have a vanity plate for my car, and this this is my sense of humor. I, um, it was, uh, I, it was. Uh, I drove a Nissan Sentra, and the vanity plate was Mister Knee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, nobody got the joke. Nobody. I had it. You know, like the the, the joke for what it's worth is that um, in Japanese, Mister Knee would be Nissan. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a cousin. I have a cousin who's half Japanese. Like, ah, uh, look at my license. She's like, "What are you talking about? This is." No one, no one got it, but I thought it was the best thing. I still think it's a great joke. But the rest of the world doesn't get it. <laughs> Crap! I had another one I was gonna say, and I just totally flew the coop. Oh, is that one you wrote sure. down? No, it's not. It was oh. off of what we were just riffing on there, and now it's like <laughs> it's gone. It's in the back of my head going, I'm right here, but you don't know what I am. Yeah. Oh, hey. That, okay. We're completely professional. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, dude, 100%. How do, how do you, Zach, how do you get through uh, that, that kind of, we'll segue to this. How do you get through writer's block if you get it? Uh, when I get writer's block, I take an indication that I'm not happy with what's happening right now. Because when uh, I'm happy with the angle I've taken in the scene or, you know, like the, the kind of way I'm approaching um, the, the intro and the way the characters are interacting, I write really quickly. And I, you know, I get you know, I, I get in that zone, that flow state, and I'm laughing at my own jokes and I'm just like, you know, I can, I can lose an hour or two, no problem in that state. And when I have... Um, writer's block when I when I sit down and I can't do anything and I find myself procrastinating like hmm, let me check over here and see what's on Facebook or uh, anything like that uh, you know it's usually a pretty good in, uh, indication that I haven't hit that with that scene so I'll take a step back and I'll um, see if I need to approach it from a different angle or just leave a note to myself that says hey next draft you, you hate this scene <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come back and I'll be like yeah I do hate that scene and rewrite it that's a cool way to look at it. Um, do you ever kind of skip ahead in the story if you're having trouble writing a certain part of it? No, I I, I spend so much of my time uh, rewriting 
what I did to make things fit together and to, to drive home the jokes and to carry the themes across that, um, you know, like writing, jumping ahead would just be, it would just be asking for even more of that. It would become that puzzle that I'm trying to back into. I, I can't, you know, my, my outline tells me where I'm going and then I won't allow myself to, to, to move forward beyond that. Okay. Well, it looks like, uh, Ron needs to take off here. So have a, have a good day, Ron. Yeah. My, my staff is showing up and I have to go direct them. I would love to stay and chat with you more, Zach. This has been absolutely amazing. Great to meet you, Ron. Thank you. Absolutely. And guys, have fun with the rest of the interview, and I'll talk to you all later. Have fun, buddy. All right, man. We'll see you. So Drew has some questions here. Zach, what kind of, what kind of, like, I know a lot of artist type people who don't like to consume the medium in which they operate. And what I mean by that is I know a lot of musicians who play a certain style of music who don't listen to any of that kind of music, but they get inspiration from other sources. Um, is that kind of how you are with writing? Like, do you keep up with uh, any of the fantasy books, like any Game of Thrones or anything like that that's uh, up and coming? I try to because a lot of times, well, I try to keep up with the trends because a lot of times they're, um, they're books that I like to uh, throw little jabs at or, or make little jokes about in, in my book. So I've got, <laughs> yeah. I've got references to lots of fantasy books and I'm kind of running around running out of the ones I'm super familiar with. So now I'm kind of like, all right, what, what else, uh, what else is out there? Uh, so I can keep on, uh, putting these jokes in there. Um, and I do like to, I do like to, to read fantasy. The, the problem I have is that I'm actually a pretty picky reader. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't, I, it sounds so pretentious, but it's, it's not, I'm just, you know, I, I have a really horrible attention span and I have a lot of fun things to do and uh, you know my kids are at a really fun age so if something isn't absolutely knocking my socks off with how entertaining it is I'll probably put it down and say maybe I'll come back to that and probably I won't yeah, um, I totally yeah. get it I have a whole bookshelf full of books like that right I actually I wrote, I wrote well, go ahead no go for it I, I wrote a blog post about it earlier this year where I said you know I, I've, I've just the idea that I, I shouldn't, uh, you know, not finish books because, you know, when you when you see a, a, a do not finish a DNF review, it, it, I, I know that sting when someone doesn't finish your book and you're like, oh, that, that hurts. So I've been tr trying to finish everything I started and at a certain point this year. I just said, I can't do it. I'm just, I'm not reading books because I, they, they feel like a chore because they're not as much fun as they would. And it's, it's nothing necessarily negative about the author. I, I stopped reading the Game of Thrones series. You know, I know those are really well written. I know they're well done. It's not for me. Yeah. Um, so, so I, 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 I start a lot of books. Uh, I don't finish many books unless I'm obligated to, but when I find the ones I like, I, I tend to, you know, really, really drive through them. So what ones do you like? Do you, have you ever read any of the old, uh, forgotten realms books? There's a whole slew oh, yeah. of authors, but yeah. Do you have any I, favorites from that, that era? I, 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 I used to read all the books about, and I'm going to say it wrong because I don't know if there's a right way to say it, but Trist the Erden or, the, Dr you know. The yeah, yeah. Uh, R.A. Salvatore. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, I know. There's so many of them. I'm, I'm on, like, I think the seventh or eighth book. And yeah, that's too, many. <laughs> no, that's too many, man. No, and that, that's a, a, exactly like what you were talking about before. Like, I, I, I was never completely sold on the character, but everything around him was really interesting to me. And um, in our, our, we we've have had a a D and D group um, consistently for about a year now, and mm -hmm. we've been trying to kind of uh, stick close to the actual lore from the Forgotten Realms. So I decided to kind of pick those up and try and you know take all the information I could from them to add to our games, but. Uh, um, yeah, there, it, it's gotten to the point where I am kind of pushing through lots of them just to get to the ones that everyone talks about because there are so many in that series. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I haven't read them since I was in high school, so I don't know. I know that like at, at a certain point it just, yeah, I stopped it and it kept going and going and going. Yeah. <laughs> good for, good for Salvatore. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I read a lot of those. I read, I read the original, uh, dragons, uh, dragon Lance trilogy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, <laughs> I, I used to love those. Um, 
And then I, you know, like uh, at a certain point, they just kept pushing those, and I heard about some of the plot points coming. I'm like, I don't want to read that, so I didn't. Yeah, I I stopped after the the first three. I think what was that the dragons of spring or whatever that one was I, yeah the, the last one in the trilogy like i, I stopped after that because i think they i think they kind of jump ship with the uh the original characters that made those books good <laughs> right <laughs> so like I, I i didn't i didn't really i don't know didn't care too much about the universe outside of those characters so that was kind of like all right well i'm moving on so <laughs> right yeah uh, um, Terry Pratchett, I, I love him. I, you know, like I'm kind of the opposite of yes. the question you asked. I, I actually, um, a lot of times before I'm about to, uh, before I'm about to um, work on a, a third or a second or a third draft, I'll, I'll try to read a lot of Pratchett or Douglas Adams or other authors who are just really funny and witty because they get my mind in a mindset where uh, after you've read people coming at things from interesting, funny angles for so long, it really sticks out like a sore thumb when there's just a straight up plain paragraph. So it will really highlight the opportunities for humor in my own writing when I've been reading a lot of, you know, kind of the masters of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I read a lot of them. Um, and, uh, you know, most recently, you know, shout out to another indie author. I've, it's been a while since I picked up a totally new author and just have, have loved it, but I've been listening to, uh, Josiah Bancroft's Books of Babel, and I think they're fantastic. Not traditional fantasy, more steampunk, but just incredibly well written and, and really fun. What's, uh, what, been what's the title again? So the first one is called Senlin Ascends, and uh, it's The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. Books of Babel. Okay. Writing it down. Yeah. I, I have <laughs> I, I have lots of. Uh, I work outside all day every day and uh so i can listen to headphones so that, that's how i've been consuming all of my all the, the books and I, I i get shit for not actually reading but i mean <laughs> you know drew especially it's, it's like, fun because Wes goes, i just read this book and it's like did you really read any of the words other than <laughs> this is the title and this is who it's by yeah and now the guy is gonna read it to me and i tell him i tell him you know i i kind of can uh uh say that yeah I, I may not have actually read the words but i can write a book report on it so <laughs> it still counts yeah, yeah absolutely i mean I, I don't think i don't think many authors out there uh at least not many successful out there putting down words on paper saying and this is meant to be read off the page yeah. if anyone listens to it they're not consuming this the proper way right yeah you know, like, <laughs> Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just fun to pick out West Love. So I mean, well, no, yeah. no, I, I'm getting that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, yeah. I, I I DM for our group, so I I'm kind of used to to getting the shit my way. So <laughs> how's the audio book of the uh, Dungeon Master? What was that? How's the audio book of the Dungeon Master's handbook? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. How are those math formulas when they're not in print and you're just hearing them? Now I'll read the random potion table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've actually started that project actually for the uh um accessibility what was it? The Library of Congress, I think. Um they had some people they had some people uh uh creating audio versions of like the player's handbook and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, it That's is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure um, so the other ones are coming too, so anyway, sorry. Sorry, speaking to our professionalism, do you want to plug your blog real quick? I uh, I totally spaced on writing that down, you know, since I got all the information off of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me plug my stuff like a professional. Yeah, um, like a professional. So I, like a professional. So, yeah, I, my blog and my website are jzacharypike.com. And that's where I have links to all of my books and audio books. And actually, I sell signed books and merchandise there as well. Uh, one of the really cool things I thought about your website was if you signed up for your newsletter, uh, you got the free shorts. You got to pick a free short story. Oh which yeah, how, which is how I got the the Cabal of Thotash, which again is riotously funny. So you should all read it. But that's an, Im <laughs> that's an important detail that I left out. Like, <laughs> come on, Zach. We said professional. <laughs> come on, man. It's okay. We're picking up your slack. Dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but, yeah, no, but that really is, it's one of the really cool things that I liked about, you know, sign up for my newsletter and get a free short story. 
Yeah, actually, and if you uh, if you sign up uh, using Son of a Lich or even just update using only it's back as Son of a Lich, there's a bonus ep- epilogue featuring some of the undead. That's pretty fun. Ooh. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna have to look for that. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you probably knew this question was coming, but how how is Dragon Fired coming along? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, the interesting, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk around this question a little bit. That's okay. I figured. That's fine. Perfectly fine. <laughs> and it's going to sound like I'm trying to avoid answering it mm-hmm. because I am trying to avoid answering it. Oh, okay. Um, bro, that's a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I wrote, I wrote after the question, if you can answer this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Uh, so when I, when I, when I had one book out, um, it, when I had just had Orconomics out, uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't doing poorly by any means, but it wasn't doing, uh, it wasn't going gangbusters. And actually a really big change for me was back in 2016, I, uh, got an offer from someone or at late 2015, actually, I got an offer someone from someone to do the audiobook, And I had, I'd been thinking about it and my rights were tangled up in a deal that went nowhere. And I was just, you know what, I'll, I'll do it. So I, I took the extra time to get out of the other deal and uh, and sign my audiobook rights over uh, and, and get an audible uh, an audible creation exchange ACX uh, deal done uh, to create the audiobook. And I figured like whatever, maybe I'll I'll sell a few extra books. And actually, um, you know, at the time it wound up being that even though when when the book audiobook launched, even though it had only been out a month and Orconomics had been out for two years. Um, it, it was like a third of my sales. It just, it just blew up on audio, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And that happened. Um, I, I, man, I, I might be getting my, my timing cross, but it, it happened about a year before Son of a Lich came out. Um, so, you know, I had that big burst of interest that it came off the audiobooks that all the other sales picked up off of that. And then it started to dwindle down as it always does because, you know, people are like, oh, I guess he's not doing anything and they go find the next cool thing to look at. Um, and then, and then Son of Lich came out. So I think a lot of readers kind of, you know, especially listeners, you know, would, were just like, oh, it's a year later and here's this awesome book. And now we're a year after Son of a Lich and they're like, where's, where's the next book? And I'm, I'm kind of like, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's expectations now. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you, if you go back and look at my record, you know, like Orconomics was 20, was, uh, was published in like 2015 and then. Um, or 20, you know, it was, it was published, it was published a few years ago. And then son of a list was like three or four years later. Um, and I, you know, I, I told myself naively that's because I, my children were, were born in that span. That's why it took so long. And now I'm like looking at how dragon is coming. I'm like, no, I just with, with, uh, with doing this part time and, uh, and family commitments, I just write slow and I, and people will say, what are you shooting for? And I'm, I, I'm honestly shooting for when the book is right. So I keep a little progress a bar on my website. There's another plug for jzacharypike.com where mm-hmm. people can go and they can see kind of how well I'm kind of, uh, how well I'm, I'm tracking along. I was uh, just about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, I think the, the trickiest thing about it is that, um, the first two phase, the first two bars, especially just take a really long time to fill. The first one is drafting. I recently hit one of those spots, uh, over the summer where I just, I stopped and I said, I have to go back and I have to rewrite some of the beginning because it's not lining up and it's, it's crippling me. So I did that and I've got my momentum going again. Um, you know, but for, for quite a few people, it just looked like the bar stopped for four months, you know, and it went stopped because I, you know, it wasn't because I stopped writing. It was because I, I, you know, rewrote 20,000 words. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> and, and now I'm kind of, I'm, I've got to move but the, the revision, I've already got all kinds of notes about scenes where I'm like, this is not cutting This is not good enough. This is not, uh, this, this theme isn't connecting. Um, so I got to go back again. So it, like the long and the short of it is it's, I'm, I'm probably a few years away from launching uh, dragon fired. And, um, it will seem really slow when I'm drafting the revision process will also seem excruciatingly slow because I actually go through the, the book twice for one bar. So, it's just gonna it's gonna drag and drag and then at a certain point the first two bars will be full and then you know over the course of a few months it'll it will get published well cool i i think it's worth waiting for so (laughs) oh yeah because like you said i think i think the way we found it was through audible so it was that yeah uh listen to the book and it's like i need the next one and then it was like a year later it was out and i was like 
holy crap, this dude writes fast. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, I need the next one. And then it's like, the hell? Where's the uh, third book there, bud? He does not write fast. <laughs> I was no. wrong. Yeah. I was so wrong. Yeah. Um, I had this great idea last uh, last fall, too, like uh, delaying, delaying things further. I said, well, what I'll do is I'll write a short little book that will be a fun... Uh, take on on uh, Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and only I'll set it on Earth, and I'll start with um, Goldson and Bags, uh, who 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 are awful titans of industry uh, from Orkonomics and Son of a Lich, um, and and I I like to say that despite the fact that it's got you know elves and dwarves and magic, uh, it's more realistic than um, than Charles Dickens' book because it's a more honest take on what it would be like if a if a you know, a, a rich person, or in this case, a pair of rich people, uh, were, were given a second chance. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I said, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this book. And I write the book, it's a, it's a song of three spirits, and I think it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, and my goal is to just, you know, get something out within a year of, of publishing uh, "Son of a Lich," and I, I did, and it was, uh, you know, like it was possible because it was short. Um, but you know, it was ultimately something where people people i get i get good reviews about it people like it it's it's fun but it's it's not the next book so i you know the other thing the other lesson i am constantly learning is stop doing side projects just just get the book (laughs) well you know i think if you have the ability and the time to uh write more like the expansion of 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 your world like that really will hold people over so <laughs> i guess yeah. you know i mean it, it's it I, I i find it interesting it uh it would definitely hold me over just to have more just more set in that that universe it's just something new yeah and that yeah. you know i can i can wait for uh the the third book if if there's other things within that same universe and the characters and that same style of humor to uh you know consume so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, totally. I um, on my patron Patreon right now. I I am running a. I'm, I'm trying to make it monthly kind of uh, interactive story where I do a couple a scene or two from the book, about 500 words, and then I kind of ask people some questions. And if if uh, patrons comment and say, well, I think it's like this or I think it's like that, I'm gonna you know kind of let them modify the way uh, that that goes forward. So. Whoa. um that's yeah, a lot no, of writing no. credits you got to include in the back of the book now. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So that's, so that's like a, it's a it's a totally it's a totally it's set on Earth, but it's a it's a totally separate story with um you know with, with it's going to include a couple cameos from characters, uh, but 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 not an obvious connection to the to the main plot line. Um, but I do have to really limit it because you know you said well if you have the, time, the bandwidth this could really help. And, yeah, yeah. If, I had, if I had the time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I know. In a, in a perfect world, but you know, I, I, you're, you're, you were talking about the uh, releasing like a, uh, um, a whole setting for a role playing setting like that. Uh, that in itself, like if you get some people working on that, like your your rabid fans will, <laughs> they'll, they can they can have their own. They can write their own stories while you're you're working on yours. <laughs> so. <laughs> What I what I've told myself is that when I'm done the draft, I, I have all these ideas percolating for it, and and, and two things are helping. One is that uh, on my blog, I pretty regularly publish Arthur, which is just I, I take some of my notes. Yeah. They're not terribly funny because it's from my notes, but I'll I'll clean up my notes and I'll uh, I'll just put out like here's a bit of more background on some aspect of the setting, be it one of the twelve clans of gnomes or. Um, you know, like the Heroes Guild, or you know, this month I'm celebrating Orktober, so I'm. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so I'm putting I'm putting out a, a, a blog on the artwork of the orcs, and I think that's all good background information to to bring into that campaign setting. So I'm I'm gonna let myself work on the rules when I'm in between drafts. Yeah, but I gotta I gotta focus on finishing. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, I know for sure, for sure. Yeah. Does that mean like? Uh, after after the third book, are you going to go the Pratchett route, route and write the uh, science of Arth or the lore of Arth? <laughs> and put out several several more volumes of of notes and stuff. <laughs> what I'd love to do, what I'd love to do, is honestly, 
get a good gaming system going, you know, then all of this art war becomes something that I can start to turn into setting material and stuff like that. And then I can, you know, make it available to patrons and, um, you know, start to start to play with it along, along those lines. And it's just another way for people to engage in the world. Cause it is, it is a fun one. It's a fun setting. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's uh, you know, it's something I'm, I'm looking at. I, I've actually had a, a you know, a conversation with a couple of publishers who, uh, want to talk about what my next project is, which is exciting. Um, and then I want to, you know, I want to, I want to work on that stuff. It's always, I, I, I love this. I love this. It's, uh, my passion. Uh, and you know, when you're doing it on the side, there just isn't enough time in the day to do everything you want. I'm sure if I'm doing it full time, I wouldn't have enough time in the day to do everything I want. So yeah, yeah. push it forward yeah. as best you can. Good deal. Right. Mm-hmm. I think we got time for maybe one or two more questions here. That's cool with you. That is cool with me. Awesome, man. I know we've had almost a good hour here of conversation. I could go even longer, but you said you've only got, you know, a finite amount of time because you've got to write and stuff. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I saw earlier this month you were at uh, Granite City Comic Con. Uh, Granite State Comic Con. Yeah. Granite State. Okay. Is that, are, are you a big, uh, like, con guy? Do you like going to the cons and pimping your stuff and. <laughs> hooking people or is it kind of just like uh this is by my house so i'm gonna go kind of deal it's a little of both i think um the the uh, another reason to uh just kind of like on work, uh aspects of uh kind of ancillary stuff is that you can't really make cons worth it as a seller or a, a purveyor of goods if you don't have enough goods to go so i I, I went to a, a con when I uh, actually a Granite State Comic Con a few years back when I only had Orkonomics. Um and I had to share a table with with uh, a couple other authors and who were wonderful. I mean, I didn't mind sharing the space with them at all, but mm-hmm. uh, you couldn't make you couldn't make the economics work. Like I, I lost a ton of money, so I said, "Oh, I got to get some more stuff." And so this year, I, I put together. Um, you know, I have I have pins now. I have. Uh, signed prints in a limited edition that are beautiful of the cast of Orkonomics. I have three books to sell. I actually started selling signed eBooks, uh, which is a cool thing where I can sell a, a you know, it's a, like a postcard with some nice artwork on it. And on the back, I sign it and there's a code to download the book. So, awesome. um, huh. yeah, That's pretty sweet. Yeah. You have so t-shirts have too now, right? I do. I do mm. through Amazon. Uh, but I, I didn't take them to the con because, you know, it, trying to predict people's sizes is, is just oh, not going to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But well, I, I saw you had the, the Orkonomics, the bills. Yes. Those are awesome. Mm-hmm. I've got to yeah. figure out how to get my hands on one. Oh, why on jzacharypike.com. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Plug away. Yeah. Just press, press the shop link and you'll see all of my merchandise. Um <laughs> But but yeah, so I, I had enough stuff there, so I said I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this another shot, and it was a blast. I I really did enjoy um, uh, pitching people and kind of you know talking to them about what my books were about. I I you know caught enough people's attention that I did sell quite a few books, and I had one person show up who was a fan. That was that was really special to me to have someone so much of a fan of your work that I'm going to come out to this con to see you, and uh, I wound up uh, talking with her for. I want to say like a good half hour. It was pretty great. That's awesome. Well, I don't think I have any more questions because uh, I had a whole block about D and D stuff, but we kind of we kind of figured out that that's not the you know <laughs> so fifty percent of a good time for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we might just skip those questions. So we don't want uh, to drudge up any bad memories or anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> We've had such a good time. Why yeah, we don't want to crap over end, right now? End on a high so, note. <laughs> so just to be clear, you had a lot of carefully planned work, and then I came in and with one or two sentences destroyed it and prevented you from using everything to use. Oh no, no, not no, at all. Man. Yeah, like, no, man. If that's what happened, that would be an excellent summation of most of my D and D experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's most central dungeon master problem. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's most DM problem. Is like I have this beautiful storyline and awesome characters and here's a cat from the first scene of the first adventure of the first session that has nothing to do with everything but the players think it's the key to everything <laughs> yeah and now we're carrying around a goddamn cat 
that I have to write stories and stats and character arcs for. <laughs> yeah, that that uh, that that speaks to me very uh, very dearly. Um, yeah. Okay. Wes, you got you got anything else? No, man, I'm all set. Um, I just want to say that uh, Zach it has been a pleasure. Um, it's like I said, I, I kind of credit you and your work as kind of bringing me into discovering audiobooks and actually being able to uh, consume literature again. So, so thanks. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I did. I did think of one quick one. Sure. Uh, the audiobooks. Do you pick who who reads them? Because the guy who reads uh, Orkonomics and Son of a Lich is amazing. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. His his voice work characters and it's crazy. It's awesome. That- yeah, Doug Doug Tisdale Jr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just really lucked out. As a pretty, like I said, my audiobook uh, production, I, I I had assigned the rights through ACX to someone else, and uh, they weren't uh, really moving on it. And uh, it, um, you know, and at a certain point, we had both just kind of forgotten about the project. No, no hard feelings, but we had just both kind of like walked away, and I didn't think I was gonna have an audiobook. And then a producer working with Doug reached out to me and said, "I got, I got someone who's agreed this, and it would be great." Um, and he was completely right. So, yeah, Doug's amazing. And now I, you know, I just uh, in general go to that group and say, "Hey, uh, you know, here, here's my next project. Let's let's work together." Yeah, yeah. And he knocked it out of the park. It was mm-hmm. it was phenomenal. And I can say, but, as uh, as someone who who listens to a lot of audiobooks, even if it's a really uh, popular and uh, popular great book series that i really want to read if i or i shouldn't say read sorry drew but <laughs> if, uh, if, i was uh, gonna let it go man no it's all right it yeah if <laughs> if if the narrator is is not on point then it uh, completely ruins it i've returned so many books that i was so disappointed that i, I couldn't listen to just because of the way that, that the narrator was but uh you're uh Doug is is great, so you you got something good going on. So I'm looking forward to the next book and anything else that that uh, you can put out that he's able to read, if that's in the future at all. So <laughs> yeah, I think he's probably my most important creative uh, partner. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've ever spoken to him, but we've never communicated directly. <laughs> oh well. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Doug. Wherever you are. <laughs> Doug, you're more than welcome to be our next uh, big fantasy guest. uh, Yeah. If you somehow hear this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Zach, it's been been amazing, dude. This has far exceeded my expectations. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're you're, you're an easy guy to talk to, down to earth. You're not the coffeehouse douche we were afraid of. (laughs) So, I mean... Anytime you want to come back down to the basement, you're more than welcome. Drop in, give us some updates. Shoot All the right. crap, shoot the shit, whatever you want to do, man. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Sounds, oh, we've we've hit level two swearing now. This is oh, awesome. I did. I said shit. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's pretty. That's pretty tame for me. I won't lie. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's a breakthrough in our relationship, and I appreciate it. Yeah, if you if you venture back into our backlog of episodes, uh, be warned. <laughs> Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're, they're NSFW. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, definitely don't go to the coffee shop and listen to. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, thanks very much, guys. This was a. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. Yeah, thanks man, a no lot. Problem. Like I said, if you ever want to come back, you're more than welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah. Definitely. All right, man. And then I guess with that, cue the outro music, mm-hmm. and we will see you later. All right. Thanks, cool, guys. man. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, thanks for thanks for blocking off a, a whole hour for us. That was pretty great. <laughs> I, no I was kind of I was kind of scared because like I shot through half the questions in like fifteen minutes, and I was like, "Oh crap, dude!" Uh, <laughs> no, but at least I got my D and D question. Yeah, I, yeah, I got one D and D question in, and then he cut all the other three of those out. So uh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, man. We'll 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 we will release you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank All you, right, man. man. Yeah, we'll see ya. Right. See ya. Bye. Dude, dude, that was fucking awesome, <laughs> dude. <laughs>
<laughs> dude, that looked so much better than expected, dude. Like, oh, man, no, it was exact. It was exactly what I wanted. Yeah, that's great. Like, uh, that was exactly what I had in my head. It was, it was just a conversation. Yeah, that's great, man. And uh, dude, you you knocked it out of the park, man. I should just let you fucking do the show. <laughs> 